Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create your own Thug Life meme filter for Instagram and Facebook. This obviously can be translated to a whole bunch of effects, but I'll give you a quick demonstration and then we'll jump straight into it. Oh, and usually this song includes a Snoop Dogg soundbite, so if you check the filter that's live on my profile, it will have that original sound, but for the purposes of this video and monetization and copyright and whatever, I have replaced it with Brahms' Hungarian dance. So be aware, there is going to be some classical music in this video. With that being said, let's check it out and then we'll jump straight into making it. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we need are our Thug Life assets, which I've Googled here, and I found this cool image, which is the Thug Life starter pack. Uh, it has a nice white background, and the individual textures are separated quite distinctly, so it should work well. What I'm gonna do is open that image in a new tab, and then just drag it over to my desktop so that I have that now as a JPEG. You'll see I also have GIMP open here. GIMP is a free open source editing software, similar to Photoshop, but more accessible to everyone. It has less features, but for this, it's basically all we need. So what I'm gonna do is create a new project in here. I'm gonna make it a square, so it'll be 1080 by 1080 pixels. And then I'm going to drag my Thug Life image inside of here. Okay, so next up, we're gonna scale it. So if you hit Shift S, that will scale it, or you can just hit this button up here. I'm gonna not unpin it, so you can have it like linked together where it scales proportionally, or you can unlink it, and we're gonna make the whole image the same size as the page, so 1080 by 1080. So cool, but it's sticking off the edge, so what we're gonna do now is hit Q on the keyboard, that's the shortcut here for alignment. And with the alignment tool, we're gonna select this image, you'll see these little uh, dots appear at the corners, and now we can change it uh, and adjust the relative position of it. So once we've got it centered, what I'm gonna do next is hit this uh, fuzzy select tool. The shortcut for that is U. And what that means is we can select the outline, all the white parts, and get those selected. Uh, now we're gonna hit Shift E. That's the eraser tool. It's also this uh, symbol down here. I've increased the size already up to like 2000 so that when I do this, it more or less just erases everything. You won't see it at first because you, by default you have a background image, but if I make that invisible, you'll see that it's gotten rid of everything that we need. Now if we come back here, hit U again, we can select these ones, and if you hit Shift and Select, then you can multi-select with this U fuzzy select tool. So we'll do that for all these inside uh, the text parts. Shift E again for your eraser, and just get rid of those two. I'm gonna leave these here because these are intentional. They're part of the design like reflective glasses. So now I'm gonna hit M. That'll get me back to the move tool. And oh, sorry, hit this again one more time actually. And just click outside of the image so that you get rid of all of the uh, pre-selected parts. So now we'll hit back to the M move tool. And what I'm gonna do now is right click on our image here in the assets panel. And I'm gonna duplicate it once. And I'm gonna duplicate it twice. So now we have three different versions of this same image, all scaled up to the exact same size. What I'm gonna do now is hit this rectangle select tool, shortcut for that is R, and I'm going to go down to the first one, I'm gonna name it, uh, we'll name it uh, text, so that's gonna be our Thug Life text, and this one here is gonna be our glasses, so rename, um, rename that one glasses, and this one's gonna be called joint, because I think that's what it is. I don't, I don't know though, I've never, I've never seen one of those before. Uh, and yeah, so now we've got the text selected. What we're going to do is use this rectangle box and highlight everything that isn't the text, shift E, and just erase it. So now if we hide these two layers, you'll see all I have left up here is the text. Now I'm going to hide that original text layer, go to our glasses layer, and do pretty much the same thing here. So if we highlight the text and then shift E, we can delete that. And you'll see if I get rid of that one, it's gone. Uh, this one here with the joint is a little bit more confusing. Not confusing, but you have to make two boxes <laughs> to make sure that you're not cutting the glasses off. So uh, R for rectangle and then Shift E for your eraser just to get rid of it. Same thing up here. We're gonna do that and we're gonna keep this joint. Uh, so get rid of your text. Shift E, get rid of that. Oh, make sure that you're on the right layer though. <laughs> Otherwise it's not gonna work. Back to uh, a rectangle and just get rid of those glasses. If you have to, you can drag and readjust the position of your boxes, Shift D, 
erase and now if we make all three of them visible it looks like we've done nothing but in fact we've separated them out into unique layers so now we're going to export those so hit your text one make it the only visible layer in the scene and then export that you can also do it up here file and export so hit that and then save it to your desktop as a png file i'm going to be calling it text export that and then do the same thing for your glasses and for the joint so this one is glasses.png and this one is joint.png okay so now we can hide the gimp pro uh, program and you see we now have these three assets here separated out from our original jpeg and they should all be in png format these are the assets we're going to be importing into spark okay so here we are inside of spark and i've created a new project so the first thing i'm going to do is take the three assets we've created and drag them here into our assets panel they'll appear nested inside of a textures folder when they do arrive uh, and the first thing they're going to start doing is automatically compressing now usually i'd recommend under this manual compression uh, setting to highlight all three of them and then check this box for no compression but if you do that these days in the most recent versions of spark it will come up with a warning saying that uncompressed textures may stop your effect working on all devices so depending on the size of your textures and the and the quality that you would like to create in the final product this is entirely optional but it may limit some of what you can do although with this filter i don't think it's going to matter too much so i'll leave that as it is the next thing i'm going to do is switch over to the 2d view just to give us a more uh, clean flat plate to work with rather than this tiny little screen in the corner and I'm also going to hit view up here in the menu bar and show the patch editor. So now we have everything set up uh, and we're going to start creating our scene. So now I'm going to hit add object and I want to add a face tracker to our scene because everything that we're doing with this thug life meme is going to be tracked onto the face. So we have that now just appearing here nested inside of our camera. Now we're going to right click the face tracker and inside of that we want to add a null object. This will act as a container for all of the textures that we've imported. So right click on that and add a plane which we're going to duplicate so you can right click and then select duplicate from the drop down menu or use the shortcut command d we're going to duplicate that twice and then rename each one after each of our three textures so text glasses and join now we're going to add materials for each of those so we can do the same thing text here and then just duplicate the materials glasses and join but just make sure that each of your materials is assigned to the correct plane because you don't want to be messing that up and then confused about why nothing's working later on. Once we have that done, we're going to control select our three materials and change the shader type here from standard to flat. And after we've done that, we can select the textures from this drop down menu and assign them to the correct materials. So we have text, glasses, and joint. And because they're all PNGs, you'll see they have transparent backgrounds and it's kind of coming together now, but all of our assets are too close to each other. So now we need to reposition them in our scene. We can do that by just dragging this slightly out of the way and zooming in on this. Uh, I'll even make this slightly smaller, give myself a little bit more room. And then if we select our text asset, we can pause the screen with his face about as centrally as you can get it. And we can use these three options up here. The shortcuts for these are E for movement, R for rotation and T for scale. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it is. So what we're gonna do is drag everything into position, scale it up slightly so that you can read it, make sure that it is where you want it to be, use these arrows and reposition everything. That seems kind of central, maybe, I don't know, we'll figure it out. You can always fix it if it's a little bit off uh, based on where he is when he moves again. So we'll do the same thing for our glasses. I'll scale those up with T, get them to where we want them with E uh, and just make slight adjustments until you're happy with the result do the same one for this joint uh, we'll move that down move it across and as you can see there's a little bit of clipping here which is to be expected because we have three layers all on the same uh, x on the same z-axis so if that is the case we'll leave our text a text on a zero take our glasses here and on the position we can move it to zero point zero one and then on the joint we can do the exact same thing so we can have it be at 0 0.02 and now all of them are slightly further in front of one another than the previous layer so they shouldn't overlap that much and because of the transparency there shouldn't be any more issues if you're if you are having those problems so yeah just readjust everything scale it up and it's a very big 
what is this a, what is this a joint <laughs> yeah and get that into position and now when we hit play you should see everything's looking pretty good uh, with the glasses you may want to adjust the position and push them actually backwards on the z-axis so slightly towards his face to do that you're going to need to come back into the 3d perspective and then you can adjust them to be slightly closer and again just move them into place until you're happy with the result and then hit play and once you're satisfied then we'll move on to the next part which is the interaction so inside the patch editor the first thing we're going to do is double tap and add a screen tap to our scene then from gesture state we're going to drag out and add an animation so type that in and you'll get an animation patch and then from this progress we're going to add a transition that will appear here as a vector 3 which we can change but we're not going to because we need that as it is and now what we're going to do is take the null object which has all of these planes nested inside of it and we're going to add a patch from this position here so you'll see that is also a vector 3 and when we connect it up to here we now have our interaction ready to go so if I tap on the screen and you can enable tap so simulate touch here and if I tap on the screen the assets all fly off together because they're all grouped under this null object so you could manually animate each one of these using this technique but it would be annoying to try and line them up and get everything working the same which is why I have this null object here so if I hit refresh everything will go back to where it was and the start position here if I delete this quickly you'll see the start positions of X Y and Z are zero so that's fine but we want our end positions to also be zero so if we change those to zero right now, then when I reconnect this null object using the position, what you'll notice is that I can tap it and nothing happens. So what we want to do now is change the start position of our Y axis, which is the up down. We're going to change that to 0 0.5. And now when I tap on the screen, or sorry, when I refresh, you'll notice that the Thug Life uh, assets aren't there. Uh, and then when I tap, they appear on the screen so they all come down from above they did it very quickly though so i'm going to change the duration in this animation patch from one to five and i'm also going to drag out from the screen taps gesture state where it's connected to the play i'm also going to connect it to this reset input so now if i tap it it slowly comes down from the top of the screen and lands in the place that we've set it up to be which is the zero position and if I tap it again, it just resets and does it over and over again for as many times as I tap it. So that's pretty cool. Very simple, uh, but much quicker, like I said, than manually animating each of these three planes and trying to line everything up. I am going to change the duration from five seconds to four seconds, though, because I think it moves a little bit smoother and it syncs up better with the music, which is the next part, which I'm going to show you now. OK, so as you can see now, I have a copy of Johan Brahms Hungarian Dance Number no. 5 saved to my desktop as an MP3 file. Unfortunately, Spark only allows M4A formats, so we're going to have to do a little bit of editing. Uh, I'm not going to explain how I downloaded this, although it is classical music, so I'm sure you'll be able to find it for yourself. Audacity, though, is free and open source, so if you want to download that, there'll be a link in the description. It's available on Windows, Mac, and on Linux, so once you have that, open it up and just drag your uh, MP3 file inside. It will appear most likely in stereo format, uh, which again Spark doesn't allow, they only allow mono audio. So if we click up here on the name and come down here to split stereo to mono, then all we have to do next is delete one of the tracks. And now we have a mono recording of our MP3 file. Next up, we want to hit that name again and reformat from whatever it is, 32 or 24. You want to make sure it's in 16-bit PCM. And you also want to make sure that your project rate is 44.1 hertz. So select that from the drop-down menu and then everything is pretty much in the right format. Now what you want to do is drag and delete any parts of your song that you don't want to use. So I'm going to take everything away except for the 15 seconds that I'm going to be using of the song. And you can play it back to make sure that it's what you want okay that sounds good and then i'm going to hit file export and export audio now you just want to rename it whatever you want to name it hungarian dance and make sure that you save it as an m4a file type you don't need to adjust any of these other settings so hit save okay and it will create a copy of that in m4a file format on your desktop okay so now we're going to take this m4a file we've created and drag it into spark ar where it will appear nested inside of its own audio folder and then we're going to hit add asset and create an audio playback controller 
which we're going to click on and select the audio that we've imported as the main audio it will be playing back and next up we're going to add a new object and it's going to be a speaker which will automatically appear inside of our face tracker but we're just going to drag that up and outside of that nested selection of objects that we've made okay so with our speaker selected now we're going to add an audio patch into our patch editor and we're going to start connecting it up to the rest of our patches so now i'm going to increase this a little bit just give us some more space and then we can double tap and add a tap and hold patch i'll move that over again and from the gesture state output we're going to create a pulse and from there we want to create a single clip controller coming out of the turned on but we're going to take it from the play that it is going into and we're going to move that into the stop instead and then from the controller we want to create an audio player and we can take the output of this and connect it to the input of the speaker so now we want to connect this and this set of patches by using the pulse so we're going to drag another line out of here the one that's connected to our single clip controller and we're going to connect it to the stop input of our animation patch and from the screen tap gesture state we're going to drag out and connect it to the play input of our single clip controller things are getting slightly messy so let me just reorganize a little bit get everything looking kind of kind of tidy just so you can see where all the connections are and the final thing we need to do now is drag our audio file in here as a patch and because it has an audio clip output it means we can connect it to the input on our audio player and so now if i hit refresh and simulate touch and tap on the screen what you'll notice is as this comes down this is triggered so you'll see it triggers the play here and it starts playing this audio file and yeah that's pretty much the entire effect you won't be able to hear it right now because i have a microphone in to record my voice uh, but if you want to play around with it then you can add something like a delay patch connect that up to your single clip controller and increase the delay time between when you tap the screen and when it triggers the audio you see that so when i tap here the animation starts immediately and then that's triggered one second later play around with those things if you like it depends on the type of audio you're using and the animation style and like i said all of these techniques can be translated to something other than a thug life meme filter but it's worth learning and playing around with and testing things out for yourself i'm going to go now to the spark ar desktop player which is where i started the video and we're going to see whether it actually worked so let's do that I think that went pretty well. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share it with a friend, post it on a Facebook group. Get my name out there, thug life forever, <laughs> and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Sorry this was quite long, I didn't expect it to be nearly 20 minutes. But if you do enjoy it, try to watch to the end. Although, I'm saying this at the end, so if you are, then wait. What? <laughs> Peace.